So in the past, I've talked a lot about the importance of speaking your truth in business. Because suppose you're a celebrity who is afraid to speak their truth or shine authentic light out of fear for losing their fans or followers or business and money. That is never good because you create a false reality for yourself by not speaking your truth and shining authentic light. So your fans and followers are not being attracted to the real you, which is never good. So I was thinking about that in terms of personal romantic relationships. So I wanted to make this video talking about the importance of being true to yourself within relationships. So suppose I am a female and I've been dating this awesome guy for two years and he proposes to me, but I am, and, and I accept his proposal. I say yes. And I'm like, yes, this is great. This is wonderful. I say yes. You know, I have this beautiful ring on my finger. I walk around to all my friends and family and they're excited. They're happy. I have their approval, their support. My coworkers are excited, whatever, right? And suppose after thinking about it for a while, I realize, holy crap, I care a lot about this guy, but I don't really love him enough. So what do I do? <laughs> do I call off the engagement? Do I piss off all my friends, all my family? Do I piss off his friends, his family, all of you know our entire world, everyone that knows us? Because they're excited about this. They're thinking, oh, this is the wedding of the year. This is great. It's about time. You guys are great together. But my heart just isn't in it. Maybe I care about him, but I just, my heart just isn't in it. So what do I do? Well, I'm gonna start out by being very afraid. And what's gonna be influencing my decision? Fear. I'm gonna be scared. I'm gonna be scared of public opinion. I'm gonna be afraid to be alone. I'm gonna be scared that I'm throwing a perfectly good fish back into the ocean. It's like, what kind of idiot breaks up with this guy? He's awesome, he treats me well, he's amazing. What kind of dummy breaks up with him? So, that fear is going to keep her in, the, in this relationship and fear of being alone, fear of not finding somebody better, um, fear of judgment from other people. So I'm also going to experience fear of judgment, public opinion. It's my ego. Now I'm also going to be judging myself. Maybe I feel ashamed of myself. I should have been in touch with myself more. I should have known myself better. I should have broken this off earlier. How did it get this far? How did I get in this deep? That was really dumb. So other people, I open myself up to being judged by others. I open myself up to shame and embarrassment, judging myself. It turns into this big thing. Now, maybe my friends will be so bothered by my cold feet that they'll just say, oh, it's just, you know, last minute jit jitters. It's just cold feet. Perfectly normal, Christine, you're fine. Well, my friends are actually speaking for the dark without realizing it because they're pulling me away from my truth and they just don't know it. See how that works? <laughs> because if I don't love this guy enough, that's my truth and they're pulling me away from it. They're just trying to smooth things over and calm things down. Like, no, you just don't know what you're talking about. Temporary insanity, Christine, just standard cold feet. It's like, no. <laughs> now I know those friends are just trying to be good friends. They just unknowingly are speaking for the dark by pulling me away from my truth. So, you know, another thing is, is I'm sitting there and I'm like, wow, you know, this is, this is really harsh. I mean, I really, really, really do care about this guy. I don't want to devastate him. I don't want to break his heart. I don't want to hurt him. So then my compassion is going to kick in and I'm going to want to put my fiance before myself. I'm going to sit there and I'm going to say, I got to stay with him. I can't, I stay with him this long. I can't, I already said, yes, I'm wearing the ring. Like, what do I do? The news is out. What do I do? I mean, I feel sorry for him. I don't want to hurt him. I feel sorry for him. Like every time I try to broach the subject, he starts crying. Like I have to stay in this. I can't hurt him. I can't do this to him. 
You know, I mean, compassion is a form of love. So I'm going to foot, I'm going to put my fiance before myself. But the problem is, is I'm actually compromising what I really want in doing that. My fiance is up here, I'm down here, and I'm actually compromising what I really want. So here's a question. What if I lived in a vacuum? What if no one else's opinion mattered, including my fiance's? What if I lived in a vacuum all by myself? What if I could do what I wanted all on my own? What if I could just press the fast forward button, call everything off, it's done, it's over, we're over with, the dust settled, everything's okay, and I can move on with my life and he can move on with his life. What would I choose? What decision would I make? Well, that's when you bust out a journal and you go sit in a park somewhere alone by yourself. And you sit there and you try to figure out what your most authentic thoughts and feelings are about this situation. Now, what if you get into a battle with yourself? What if while you're journaling, it turns into head versus heart? Where it's just a, you know, a logical mind versus your heart and your feelings. You know, logically, I really should stay with this person. He's an awesome catch, but my heart just isn't in it enough. So what do you do? Well, there is a referee. Between head and heart, there is a referee, and it's called your gut. And your gut is very trustworthy because it is your intuition, and it is directly connected to your higher self, your spirit guides, etc. You can always trust your gut as a fantastic referee with your head and your heart. That's what your gut is for. Why? Why is your gut a good go-to? Because your gut is aligned with truth. So if you are not aligned with truth in being with your fiance, your gut's going to go crazy every time your fiance's around. And it's going to be your higher self saying, Christine, hello, truth time. You're not really in love with him. What are you doing? Psh, psh, psh. I keep getting these like kicks in my gut. It's reliable. It's reliable. And that's going to be your angels trying to come through to you. So the good news is, is truth is something that actually connects us. So what does that mean for my fiance, the gentleman who just proposed to me? What does that mean for him? Well, it means his spirit guides and his higher self are going to go after his gut. It means they're going to go after his gut at the same time and say, she doesn't love you. She doesn't love you. She doesn't love you. She doesn't love you. So both of our guts are going to be bothering us. Both of our intuition is going to be bothering us. Now, maybe he's deeply in love and he doesn't care about his gut, but that's where he's going to have to pay attention and journal in the park as well and tune into his intuition. But he's going to have a gnawing feeling as well. Um, so... Since both of us are not aligned with truth, the light is going to do what they can to separate us because neither one of us are aligned with truth. So the, so, so the, the light's going to try to come in and help us and they're going to try to send in reinforcements by speaking through some of our friends. Um, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, they're, they're going to, you know, have your have your friends show up and say, hey, do you really want to do this? You know, you seem kind of off ever since you've been engaged, blah, 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 blah. You know, maybe you'll have like some friends speaking for the light. Maybe they realize it, maybe they don't. <laughs> but they'll be in your ear trying to like cast doubt on the situation and trying to align you with truth. But <clears throat> suppose I decide to continue with the engagement suppose I decide to move forward with the wedding so now my spirit guides and his spirit guides are going to be really concerned about him why because I've just turned into an actress now I'm faking I am pretending and I'm just I'm just acting I'm acting like everything is okay when it's not it's one big cover-up how can Christine cover her true feelings it just becomes one big cover-up so now the spirit guides are going to be really concerned about him because they don't want him to be married to somebody who's not in love with them. 
they're going to turn the whole situation around on me and basically say, we don't want you to be his wife. We want him to marry somebody who truly is deeply in love with him. And you are not. You do not have the support of universal energies in marrying this man, Christine. So they're going to turn the whole situation around on me and they're going to try to help him. Um, now, what they're going to do is they're going to ask me to take this fish and throw it back into the ocean. So that the angels can rise up and support him in finding someone who's deeply in love with him. So his spear guides will help him heal from his broken heart and they will help him meet somebody else and marry them. A woman who is deeply in love with him. Where the love is reciprocated. Goes both ways. So me throwing this fish back into the ocean, what does that result in for me? Good karma. Because if I actually did stay with him, knowing that I didn't love him enough, it would be bad karma for me. Because the light would question why I veered away from truth and why I married him anyway. Christine, you're not being true to yourself. You're not being true to him. What are you doing? You're going away from the light. Now you have bad karma for staying with him. You didn't do him any favors and you didn't do yourself any favors. So Christine, this is short-term pain, long-term gain. Yes, you're breaking his heart and maybe he'll, you know, give you the middle finger and slam the door on the way out. But once he recovers from that pain, he will be better off and you will have just done him a favor. He might not realize it. He might be sad, mad, whatever, but later he will realize you did him a favor. Because they'll make sure. <laughs> he realizes. These angels will. They'll, they'll make sure. So universal energies respond to authenticity. So when you are inauthentic, universal energies respond to it. The law of attraction kicks in and you attract darkness to yourself. When you are authentic and make decisions based in self-love, honesty, truth, you know, love for others, that's when you trigger the law of attraction in a good way. And this is the part of the story where I really wish you guys could see what I see. Universal energies are going to rise up to support the, the guy that, you know, I just broke up with in finding someone else, in finding a better suited partner for him. But I'm not exactly chopped liver. So suppose I'm getting all sorts of crap from people like you idiot, you ungrateful piece of beep, right? Well, you're not good enough for him anyway. You know, people are pissed. So while they're getting mad at me and casting shame and judgment at me, maybe I'm hating myself. Maybe I'm casting shame and judgment at myself. My God, I suck. I really do suck. I hurt him. Everyone's mad at me and I'm just feeling really sad and lonely. This is where universal energies rise up to support me too. I'm not chopped liver. Universal energy is like, oh, Christine made a decision based in self-love. She made a decision based in truth. We're going to help her. We're going to help her heal. We're going to help her recover. We're going to bring somebody onto her path that really does knock her socks off. See how that works? I'm not chopped liver. Universal energies rise up to help me too. I'm not the bad guy here. I'm not evil. I'm not the devil. It's okay to call off an engagement and look like a jerk. It's okay to do that because I'm aligned with truth. I did him a favor and I did myself a favor and nobody, nobody knows it. Except for me, my spirit guides, the divine, my higher self, and the most important entities that need to know that. And if you guys are, you know, experiencing any sort of situation like this, I'm, I'm telling you, they will take care of you. Don't worry. They will breathe a sigh of relief that you threw that fish back into the ocean because now they can help them. You just did them a favor. So, you're, you know, I'm still holding God, God's hand. 
you know, there's no shame. Um, you know, I should be proud of myself for making a decision based in, you know, honesty, authenticity, bravery, self-love, you know, nothing to be ashamed of. You know, the angels are going to be applauding my decision for being true to myself. So, um, again, this is just all one big hypothetical. I just decided to use myself as, as an example. Um, I've never been engaged, <laughs> but... Uh, I at least just wanted to kind of walk you guys through a scenario where I thought all of these things applied perfectly so that I could make my points, make their points, because this stuff is really important. I don't want you guys living your lives for other people. How far are you going to get into it? How much time is going to pass? How far are you going to go? How deep are you going to get into it before you make a U-turn and align yourself with the truth and the light? Because when you do align yourself with the truth and the light, you're holding God's hand. So you're okay. You're not holding God's hand when you walk away from your truth, no matter how difficult it is to speak. The right path to take is often the hardest. And I would love to quote my spirit guides because one of their favorite things to tell me when I feel backed into a corner and I'm not really sure what to do. They say, Christine, be true to yourself and all will fall into place for you. And in the meantime, take care and be well. Thank you.